Hello, this is Wine Blast. I'm Susie Barry. He's Peter Richards. We're both masters of wine and we happen to be married to each other. And this episode is about how to buy wine. Such a big topic. Um, Something we're asked about all the time, understandably, I think. um, Because, you know, everyone wants to get it right and not waste money and time. Um, You just want to end up with something delicious that's, I don't know, you know, just right for you, for mm. your occasion, budget, uh, all that stuff. Yeah, you know? I mean, on and, which... And on maybe, which... actually, also, sorry, to finish that point, maybe also have a bit of fun while you're at it. Yeah, why not? Uh, on which <laughs> note, I do get the feeling, though, that, that sometimes people think we live in this sort of magical world mm. where we're just given free wine all the time and <laughs> never have to actually buy the stuff. Yep, yeah, yeah. Um, yep. Because that, that, the, that does come up quite often, doesn't it? it, it, it when really we're talking does. to people. Yeah, fair enough, you know, and, and it... And it it's almost as if our house floats on a lake of free wine. You know, it's almost, we're, Mont Rocher. It's, it's like we're paddling as I speak through the Chateau A moat of Mont Rocher. <laughs> I mean, you know, so there is some truth in it, isn't there? And I think it's good to address this. You know, we do get free samples sent to us all the time mm-hmm. for, for tasting, and sometimes we feature those bottles. Um, you know, and we go on press tastings where loads of bottles are open for us to taste or go on press trips where we travel around tasting wine. You know, it's just part of the job. We, we couldn't do what we do effectively if... if, if we had to buy every bottle that we tasted. But equally, you know, we, we buy a lot of wine. Um, we really do buy <laughs> not, not a much, lot of wine. Too much wine. I mean, most of the wine we drink, though, we, we buy. You know, usually, yeah, admittedly, yeah. because we've tasted it at a tasting and mm-hmm. we really liked it. Mm. But that means a lot of the wine that we talk about here on the podcast and beyond is stuff we've bought and mm. from a pretty wide range of retailers, I'd say. I mean, we, we shop around. We do shop around, We're fickle. We? We, we, are, we are fickle people. Uh, I think it's pretty normal, though, don't I? I think most people do that. It's a healthy thing to do. Um, you know, we've also, I think it's fair to say, got a pretty good insight into this wider topic because, you know, I've only recently finished chairing the 2021 Decanter Retailer Awards um, and, and the results of that are just being announced. Which yeah, is indeed. Very exciting. Uh, and this show is timed uh, to coincide with that in yeah. a fit of... Uh, you know, in a fit of actually ha- making things happen at the right time. Making it happen, making it rare, happen. Rare now, but, but just going to the Decanter Retail Awards, that, that yeah. was a lot of work, wasn't it? Yeah, you saw I know, the, you saw I the know there was a lot of work went <laughs> you into saw that. The fallout, yeah. I mean, it was, it was just spending day after day, you know, pouring over all this info from retailers of, of, of all kinds in the UK as to what they've been up to over the last year. Um, then discussing it with my, you know, brilliant team of judges um, to come up with. What is, you know, I, 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 even though I say it myself, you know, an amazing set of shortlisters, uh, runners up and winners. So, you know, all of this together made us think um, this would be a good time to get into what, you know, are the latest trends in wine retail, mm-hmm. what you should be looking out for, how to buy wine in, in just the most effective way, how, you know, how to shop smart, as yeah. it were. I mean, we should clarify right right from the start that this episode is about buying wine to drink, not invest. Mm. You know, that, that's a whole different ball game yeah. um, I know your decanter awards you know there is a an en prima category yeah, there is one yeah um, but but here we wanted to keep the focus of this program all about buying wine to drink mm-hmm. um that can be fine wine just as much as everyday wine but just not buying to invest or, or make money from yeah, it yeah. and I think this is a really interesting time to look at this your covid has totally changed the way we shop uh, and the way that shops sell to us. Um, I think we've all seen that. But, you know, there's also a whole load of other dynamics going on that are making this issue fascinating uh, at at the moment. So, you know, as we emerge from from the pandemic, from lockdowns, uh, we're also gearing up now for Christmas and New Year, you know, traditionally the peak time for wine sales. So we thought it would be worth taking a fresh look at at all of this and, and throw in a few wine recommendations at the end too, by way of cherry on this particular cake. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And anyway, we, we thought the best way to go about this was to use the results from the Decanter Retailer Awards as a springboard to discuss broader points about wine retail, which, to be honest, I think are similar, pretty similar across many parts of the world, aren't mm. they? Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll be hearing from two brilliant guests, Paula Tisch of Vindenista, a small single independent wine merchant in Acton with a unique approach to selling wine. And then also Pier Paolo Petrassi, head of beer, wine and spirits at Waitrose, one of the UK's smaller supermarkets, but which has always had a real focus on wine and is obviously part of the John Lewis partnership. Mm, yeah. So we're going to be talking about lots of things from, you know, discounts to uh, virtual events, service, thirsty friends come up, mm. which is very interesting. Kegs, cans, bagnums. <laughs> bagnums. 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 Which are, which are magnums of wine in a bag. 
Fair enough. If you didn't know. Says it on the, it says it on the um, tin as it were. And we're also touching on wine shortages because, you know, in our interview with Pierre Paolo, there is the following news flash. We will definitely not run out of wine at Christmas. That's the main thing. I mean, who needs petrol? <laughs> anyway, we, let's we need just, petrol and wine. We need, no, we need petrol to go and get our wine. <laughs> Maybe not if we buy online. Anyway, let's start at the beginning. You mentioned COVID has changed wine retail. How so? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, one of the first things to say is that it's been a busy time for wine shops. You know, if we dial back for a second, you know, when people ask us, which they do regularly, what's happened to wine sales and consumption overall during lockdown? There's an expectation everyone's been going crazy and, and drinking loads, but that's not really the case. You know, if you look at the figures, they seem to show that overall consumption has actually declined. The OIV figures said it's been the lowest uh, consumption globally of wine since 2002. And that's, you know, that's quite a big dip. Mm. Surprise, isn't it? Yeah, it really and is. It's, yeah. And it's partly because restaurants and bars mm. couldn't operate normally. What we call the on-trade uh, couldn't operate normally during lockdown. You know, and that accounts for about half of wine consumption in normal times in the UK. You know, but what has happened is that people have bought more wine through shops as a result. Yeah, so it's been it's been a boom time for wine retail. But but how have things changed? Yeah, yeah. It, I, well, I mean, I guess it's partly been a sort of rapid acceleration of trends that were there before, but just got fast forwarded. Things like online, for example, you know, when lockdown happened, even though wine shops were deemed essential services here in the UK. I love that. I do love that. Sorry, which, we just I think said that they we were essential services. We have got our heads screwed services. on in some ways, haven't we? Not <laughs> always. But, you know, um, people just didn't want to go out or just wanted the convenience of shopping online. So, you know, online boomed and, and retailers who didn't have efficient online operations had to get one fast, you know, and many of them did, often with a click and collect. Yeah. It was, you know, people people innovated quickly. They, they moved, changed, I, th- I think you shifted. had some, did you not have some facts and figures about Always that? Always have facts and figures. Got Thank to have some FNFs. So we had some facts and figures. Peter's on FNFs. Um, the, uh, the Economist had an article about how consumer habits, general consumer habits, not just wine. Not have, specific uh, to wine. No, no, have undergone, you know, a dramatic shift over the last 18 months. Apparently from late 2019 to March 2021, spending on services was down by a fifth while spending on goods held up, which means people were buying things online rather than, than services, which you do more in real life. Mm. You know, according to the UK's Office for National Statistics, share of retail sales made online, again, generally, has risen from less than 20% before the pandemic to nearly 30% now. So it's just accelerated those trends. Mm. And I mean, and so, so what else has changed if we think particularly about wine, though? Yeah, yeah. I mean... It, it, Clearly, it's, I think it's been a time to try new things and see what sticks. You know, that there's so much innovation been going on. Things like uh, virtual or online events obviously boomed, uh, giving bored people stuck at home things to do. And mm-hmm. they gave us mm-hmm. things to do, not that we were bored particularly. But, you know, they've also <laughs> driven sales at the same time for retailers. Yeah. Um, another thing is our newcomer category this year was fiercely forced. You know, all this kind of disruption and uncertainty seems to have created openings, I guess, for, for a whole new breed of, of of brave wine sellers you know to, to come on the scene so, so this is a good time to be buying wine yeah yeah weirdly um you know i think there's just a lot of healthy competition now there going on so you know lots of new kinds in terms of, of innovation you know, exactly yeah, exactly yeah. you know uh, um you know thing companies are engaging with people in so many different ways now um you know i remember it used to be in this competition that the supermarket category was the one that you know, that's when we left the last. It was always the most exciting to judge, the, you know, the most hard for, and the, the results were always the, the, the most anticipated in that category. Yeah. You know, now it's so much broader than that. You know, online retailer, virtual events, sustainability specialists, these are the exciting things now. And that's, that's really interesting. You know, I've, I've, I've chaired this competition for nine, nine years now. Really, nine I think. years. Um, you know, and this was by far the most exciting set of entries I've ever seen. Really? You know? Yeah, it really was, partly because... That's great, you know. It? We've talked about how how retail sales have 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 gone up, but there was just there was no hint of you know profiteering. People were being quite the opposite. They were being supportive, charitable, you know, engaging with local communities and staff and customers in a way that was just really uh, you know wonderful to see. Mm, mm. Okay. Anyway, so well, well, yeah. we'll let, let's let's I think now get into the specifics yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and our first interview, um, which is Vindenista. Uh, I, think, small... I think it's pronounced Vandenista. Oh, Vandenista. Yeah, Vandenista. Oh, Van. But, you know, Van. I mean, you pronounce it how you want to. You, you, I might be getting you, it wrong too. You, you say tomatoes, I say tomatoes. <laughs> I say Vin and I'm, I'm, I'm from Yorkshire, so excuse me. <laughs> yeah, Vindenista. Sounds like something else my mum my would say. So Vandenista. 
Does that mm. sound more? Oh, that sounds very. That very sounds a bit French. Maybe it's French. Right Who knows? No, no, it's... Anyway, Vandenister is mm. a small independent wine merchant. Um, as we've said before, they're in Acton, West London. Now they only stock 150 wines, but they have a hybrid model, whereby you can go in and simply buy a bottle of wine, but you can also drink wines by the glass or mm. bottle. Mm on site. Now, owner Paula Tisch describes it as a shop with a drinking option on top. Mm, like nice. that. Yeah. And they also do, do fun stuff like wines in cans and, and, and bagnums, which we've, we've mentioned. Uh, you know, and <laughs> you refillable, love your bagnums. Re, I, I just love the word. Uh, and <laughs> refillable bottles from, from wine on tap. Mm-hmm. Um, they also organise their wines, and this is interesting, by style and occasion. Not by country. Well, that's something we did at the wine festival, of course. Yeah, we did. Mm. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we and did. it worked really well, didn't it? It did. It did. It sort of follow your taste, which we called it. Um, so Van Denista won the London Neighbourhood Wine Shop Award at this year's Decanter Retailer Awards for, 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 for small operators. And, you know, I started by asking Paula what advice she would give people looking to get the best quality and value from an independent wine merchant. I would say an open mind is always a great start. Um, if you go in thinking you only want to buy French or you only want to buy Spanish or you're only going to buy this, um, in a shop like ours, which is fairly small, we've only got about 150 lines, it's sometimes we can't uh, offer exactly what you're looking for. But what we can do is maybe offer an alternative. Um, and I think that's where independents come into their own. Mm. And so offering alternatives, that, that, that assumes a conversation, you know, advice really. It does, but also um, on our tasting notes, every bottle has a tag. And we do say, um, if you like a Malbec, try this. Uh, If you like a Rioja, try that. Because not everyone wants to have a long, deep conversation in an independent. You know, some people do feel that um, they don't want to engage because they're a bit nervous. And that's fine. Now, you make a big point of organising your wines by style and occasion rather than by region or country, which is the traditional way of doing it. Don't people get lost? I mean, how does it work? Buying wine on countries is um, of quite an old school way of doing things given that winemakers um, are doing so many different things in, in countries like if you, if you if you just buy wine from Argentina you pick one off the shelf what if you've got a uh, Criolla Pice that's really light but you don't know that um, if you're buying a white Rioja you may get a nice old school one you may get one from Viura but you may get one that's mainly Sauvignon you're going to have a bit of a surprise so I think it's um, a way of, uh, of kind of putting it into occasion and into taste, um, I think is a better way for us because I think most people, when they come in, we ask them about well, what style of wine, what do you like to drink? Mm. Um, and that's always a good, and normally people, they might say Malbec, but that's a Malbec or Rioja, that's code for, I like something rich and I like something smooth. Um, and I think that's where, we play well. I think it's harder in in a large supermarket because you just don't have people to explain it. And it's a good shorthand and it makes sense because that's what most people ask us for. Hmm. I'm having chicken tonight. I'm going around to a, I'm going around for friends. We're having friends round tonight. We actually do say, well, how much would you like to spend? Um, and sometimes they'll say, well, not much because these friends don't care about wine. And that's fine by us because we've got some good, you know, we call them thirsty friends. We've got some, you know, some good bankers that you can just open, pour, enjoy. Nothing special, nothing complex, just hugely enjoyable. And you'll enjoy drinking them as well as your friends. We've all, so friends to impress and thirsty friends. We've all got friends like that, haven't we? I'm sure. But, you know, why should people shop in a small independent merchant like, like you rather than, for example, just go to the supermarket, which is easy, or place a big online order? I mean, I think that people sometimes fear that going to a small independent merchant means it's going to cost them more, for example, or it's going to take them loads more time. And, you know, I think we we made a clear point never to compete with supermarkets. We can't. Um, we don't just look for rock bottom wines that we can put on the shelf to hit a price point. That's not where an independent like us plays. Um, we look for really good value wines. And the hardest part of my job is choosing, I would say, choosing the under £12 wines because they've all got to be wines that we drink and we enjoy. It's not going to be there on the shelf because... 
that is a good price and we just don't care. We take a lot of care selecting the, 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 the more value wines, but also I think it should be an experience. It's about service. Um, we, we know people, we get to know their tastes. We can make recommendations on what they like. Um, we can steer them away from wines that we know they absolutely won't like. Um, I, I think it's personal service in an independent um, and in a single independent, because we are a single independent, we aren't, um, you know, we haven't got several shops. I think that's where our strength is as well. Mm. We know people, um, you know, when people turn up and they've forgotten their card, we will say, if we know them, well, you can come back and pay later. Obviously, if you don't know them, we won't say that. I was going to say, I'll be popping around quite soon then. Uh, this sounds like wonderful yeah. terms. So you also do uh, refills uh, with wines on tap. Uh, talk us through how that works. It, you know, sounds great from a sustainability point of view, but what about sort of quality and, and, and shelf life and that kind of thing? We buy them in kegs and you do get quite long shelf life in that, in, in the kegs. Um, as we know, because we um, had to shut off our kegs we stopped doing um, refills during lockdown because we also got the kegs for our house wines to pour when people wanted to, to drink in. And so we had a bit of a gap, a few months gap, when we actually didn't use them. And then we went and retasted them and they all tasted fabulous, which was really, really good news to us. And it just proved that kegs actually have a really pretty decent shelf life. Um, the benefits, I mean, we don't, we don't go for necessarily the cheapest of the cheap you are saving maybe 60 pence on a bottle. We worked that out because we actually took a, a wine that we normally have on the shelf. And actually we had it in keg as well. And there was about a 60 pence difference, which isn't necessarily a massive saving, but you are bringing back the same bottle the whole time. Um, and so A, you are getting some savings, but on a sustainability point of view, you are not using up that glass. It's about, sustainability and um, people buy their glass their bottles from us we we actually we don't take anyone any any old bottle because we actually have a measurement in there so we actually make sure that people have their proper 750 mils or 500 mils we do a slightly smaller format and we do them in Grolsch bottles which have a really tight cap and I've obviously tried out how long they last um, and I would say if you keep the cap on you can get two to three days out of them. And tell us about your bagnums and your cans too are they are they proving popular? The bagnums we've sold um, probably pretty much since we started um, back eight years ago um, and they have they, they again there's premium wine in there um, and we've built up a big fan base for those and we do um, we do sell them the rosé goes um, really well in the summer as you can imagine because they're portable they're great for picnics um, they're great people take them camping they take them to um, concerts um, and events where um, you're not allowed to bring glass bottles in uh, they go really well because they're a portable format and people know the product inside is good cans are I would say still very embryonic um, they haven't quite caught the imagination of um, the customer or at least our customers and I know I've been chatting to some other independents and they they feel the same way I think there's a lag I think they will take off um I just think at the moment there's still the oh my god it's in a can um barrier and also um, 250 mils in a can looks like a really small pour um so it's trying to get people's heads around that we do one brand at the moment and it's uh, a baden horse seriously good juice in the cans for a can and the price um and i think once people get their heads round um that it that you can pour it out of a can you don't have to drink it from a can and if you only want to share a glass of wine with a friend um they're a really good alternative and mm. you get you get two one two five mil pour so i think it's not just a sustainability thing it's also um, you know, drink moderation. You want to have a bit, you want to have a, you want to have a glass of wine, but you don't want to have, or you want to have two glasses of wine by yourself, or you want to share it with a friend. Really, really good format for that. So I hope to, I'm not giving up on them. I hope to increase the range. I think a lot of money has been invested in them. There's a lot of very, very poor product out there though. I've just been tasting a lot recently and there are some horrors out there. And I think that is also going to be a bit of a barrier, but we're going to get there. And I do think it will be a format that takes off. Final question, which, which countries, regions or brands do, do you personally look for when it comes to getting the best bang for your, 
for your buck in, in wine terms? I think I always like Austria. I think Austria has always provided really good wines. Um, they, Austria doesn't do cheap wines, but Austria does really, really good wines. And if you're going to spend, um, I think we start probably about 13, I think 13.95 is, our, is, is um, where we start. I think you can get just really, really good wine from Austria. If you like silky reds, um, you know, Zweigelt, Blau, Frankish, you don't have to spend a fortune um, to get a really, really good experience. I also think looking slightly outside <clears throat> popular regions, um, you often get a good bang for your buck. Uh, wine that I'm very fond of, it's 1095 and it comes from Navarra and it's just, and it's got a bit of age on it. And it's just seriously good for people who want to, who want to Rioja, maybe an old school Rioja, but also people who like Bordeaux. And that, I recommend that a lot because it, the label's great. It's very old, it's old school. It tastes good. Um, and it, it's really good value value for the money. Bul our Bulgarian Pinot again under under fourteen pounds. You can't get you cannot get a good Burgundian Pinot for that. You can get Burgundian Pinot for that money, but I, it's not something that I would personally I would personally drink, and I wouldn't want to sell to customers. Um, so I think it's just looking at, at you know being prepared to try slightly outside maybe a popular area or a slightly different country. Um, you know, a different country. Um, Portugal, again, I think people think Portugal at the cheap end, you always get good value and you do. But also even at the premium end, you can get some really, really good wines from Portugal where you might get some fairly mediocre wines from somewhere like Burgundy. Sounds delicious and very, very sound advice. Paolo, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you. And I guess independent wine merchants won't be for everyone. No, that's, Some people that's, just that's to want say. to buy and get it done with and move on. But yeah, yeah. they really can offer great advice. Also more quirky wines, both at the expensive and the good value yeah. level. Yeah, absolutely. And this, it's worth remembering those, but, but those two things, aren't they? You know, they're not mm. often given credit for having good value wines. Often they have fantastic value they wines. They do, yeah, um, yeah. You know, I think people often ask us as well, you know, what should I buy? Which is an almost impossible question to answer. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, our advice is often, you know, talk to your local wine merchant because that's what they do best. And, yeah. and they will be able to find the right wine from their range to suit your taste and your budget. It's, yeah. You know, it's a personalised service. I mean, yeah, because to be fair, you know, the more you get into wine, the more you realise it's about working out what you like and why and mm. then which options suit best. And, mm. and smaller wine merchants can be brilliant in helping you start down yeah, that road of, of understanding your own absolutely. taste. You know, in that sense, you know, organising wine by style and occasion is great. I absolutely love that. You know, um, I think more people should do it, particularly at this level. You know, yeah. it doesn't necessarily work in supermarkets and, and some have tried it, haven't they? Yeah, think, they have. Supermarkets are difficult, but, yeah, you know, in, in that, in that sense. sense. But, you know, I think where you have advice on hand, you know, it, it really can work. Yeah. And I, I, I mean, to be honest, though, I just also love the hybrid model where you can buy, but you can also drink in. Mm, I mean, it's, great, it, isn't it? it's not entirely a new idea, but it's definitely on the up. And I think more people, mm. as we're saying, should do it because it, it's a brilliant way to discover new things without having to commit to mm -hmm. a full bottle, which may or, let's face it, may or may not be to your taste. Um, yeah, it's yeah. also really, really sociable. It's um, fun, isn't it? Uh, you know, which, which I think we all appreciate right now. Uh, oh, no. Anyway, all this is leading up to the fact that mm. I popped into Wilding recently, a, a new hybrid chain which won your Newcomer Award. Mm. So I went along with a bunch of girlfriends to see what the excitement was all about. This is such um, such a great place, it really is. And so we, we came in, um, it's it's just buzzing with, with life and with people. Um, and um, and we, we've already ordered um, Frosé. We, we ordered every aperitif there was except for the non-alcoholic one. So there was some um, fino with uh, salted nuts, well, truffle salted nuts. Um, we had a frosé, we had a port tonic. Where do we ever get that normally? And um, also a, a cremon, an English cremon with some uh, English cassis. Um, but also there's a whole load of bottles of wine here to choose from. Um, I've actually gone for a Gaia Assertico just because it reminds me of, of being in Santorini and having the most delicious, delicious wine that you could ever wish for. So I love this place. It's really, really nice. Um, it's very friendly. It's got a great atmosphere. Um, there's not much to dislike about it, really. Beautiful. As I'm standing here, beautiful lampshades, yeah. 
anyway, that's not the most important thing. Uh, but it's fun. It's lots of fun. And uh, there's lots of large wine glasses about to go to our table, so I'm going to go. But great place, yeah. Lampshades and froze. <laughs> Good God. Good God. This is what happens when you hit the town. I was having fun. Oh, my word. <laughs> Dear listeners, I, I, I can only, was ap- definitely a new I can one only on apologise. No, it looked like fun. The photos look like fun, i tell you what. Oh, was, I do love the sound fun. of the, um, the fino, with the, what is it, the fino with the... Uh, truffle salted nuts. Oh, oh, my word, that sounds good. That was really good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll leave that one with you all and, because and, that and, is just heaven. And the wine on tap sound, sounded fun too, did it? It was, it was, it was, it was yeah, it was yeah and it works well. Yeah. You know, we had a refillable bottle that they just filled up from the tap. Um, I mean... It, it was initially a bit weird, I'm mm. going to be honest. And yeah. I, I did actually wow. question whether we were being given the right wine. Um, poor that, waiter. That's because you're contrary, um, isn't it? Because, I, because I'm what? Nothing. Mm. Anyway, but, I, you know, because, well, it was served to us from this clear glass bottle um, yeah. without a label or a cork or a screw cap or whatever. But our waiter, you know was very patient and um and reassuring um you know and he explained that they they fill from the from the tap from the keg of problem? the wine what, what, didn't you well, expect to I, come thought, I, I don't know I, I i sort of hadn't got my head around the fact it was coming from a tap and therefore this bottle i sort of expected oh, yeah. it still to be in the right bottle somehow which ah. was mad whereas oh, right. the bottles are all um particularly wilding bottles i think they've yeah, got yeah. a little red well, logo sense, on them it, for the refill of, yeah. it does it does i mean let's oh. face it it's obviously a really sustainable option you know you mm-hmm. do need people i think to have the more expensive an exciting wine as well as the house wine, yeah. you know, which they did, um, yeah, yeah, that's it, that's and it. and then it'll work properly. But but you know that is increasingly the case anyway. I yeah, think. I think so. And more and more people are doing it too and doing it well. So it's, it's great to see. You yeah, know? And I, I think it kind of probably sits alongside that trend for people to invest in enigmatic machines, doesn't it? Yes. Which you know keep the ones that are keep the wines fresh, so you can buy it by the glass. You know, even from a really posh bottle, for yeah. example. It's you just, know. It's- Different way of doing it. I yeah, think, and really. there's definitely been a, a sort of really noticeable trend lately in, in hybrid venues and beyond. You know, one definitely I think we totally endorse. It's absolutely. A I mean, nice it's, absolutely. It's a great way to try a small glass of something that you probably wouldn't be able to afford a full bottle of. Yeah, um, yeah. Or just, frankly, just try something totally different yeah. and new that you don't know whether you're going to like or not. But, you know, mm. if you have a small amount, that's fine. Mm. Anyway, any other tips you've got looking um, at newcomers or, or independent merchants at this stage? Yeah, I mean... I think Paula's point about an open mind was was really well made. You know, you, you can find some brilliant bargains, some brilliant wines, you know, if you're open to suggestions, you know, and, and, and some of the independents are also fantastic specialists, you know. So if you, know, if you like English wines, you can check out Grape Britannia, see what they've done. There. Where are they? Uh, they're in Cambridge. Okay. Um, they won our English and Welsh Wine Specialist Award. You know, amazing range, totally passionate kind of evangelical owners. They don't just do loads of brilliant sparklings uh, and still wines, but they also do things like orange wine, natural wine, you know, Charmat, Petnat, carbonated, nouveau style mm-hmm. wines from England and Wales, you know, which, which is a fantastic range and that kind of thing can be really rewarding yeah, to, yeah. to get stuck into any any others you'd cite yeah well there were quite a few probably too many to probably mention too, yeah. but um you know we gave awards to bat and bottle for italian novel wines great uh shop in the southwest for central and eastern europe carrington's for rhone museum wines for south africa you know and then places like highbury vintners and cambridge wine merchants and the warley wine shop uh a perennial favorite but you know you know, wherever you are in the uk or the world there will be independent wine merchants waiting to help you, you know, some with unique specialisms and and they won't survive if we don't support them. I think that's a really important point to make. And it's hardly a chore to do so. <laughs> given how many how many good wines they offer. Yeah. Um but anyway, we wanted to shift focus now to the other end of the spectrum, didn't mm. we? To yeah, yeah. the supermarkets. Uh-huh. Now, whether you like it or not, most of us shop in a supermarket. Mm-hmm. So why not buy our wine there too? Yeah. Now, I chatted to Pier Paolo Petrassi, head of beer, wine and spirits at Waitrose for the last 11 years. And he's a fellow master of wine, mm. um, one of three MWs actually in the Waitrose buying department. Mm. He, <laughs> he was joined by his lovely dog, Luna, who you might hear whining gently. Um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> How appropriate, whining gently, in the background. Um, but I started by asking him how to get the best value and quality in a supermarket like Waitrose. I expect to be able to blindfold any customer in the wine aisle. They simply reach out and anything they touch will be good. And and I suppose within that, you have to accept that there's value and value for money. And I suppose we would always seek to give the best possible value for money, um, no matter what we're selling. And you have to also accept that customer expectations and tastes 
vary hugely from customer to customer. But as long as they know roughly what they're buying, I would expect our Pinot Grigio to be both typical, good value, good quality, consistent and reliable. And the same would go for any other style of wine that we sell. And because people, I mean, obviously do often need quite a bit of advice or would like some advice when, when it comes to wine buying. How do you get around that in the supermarket setting? Can you offer that? It's, it's quite, it's difficult because, I mean, we're, you and I are used to looking at that wall of wine and being able to decipher it quite quickly. But to the average consumer out there, it must be like being thrown into a cockpit of a 747 and told to land it. It, it must be so confusing. So you use all the tools at your disposal from the stuff that's not immediately there at the point of fixture. So publications, um, online content. Um, we obviously have beer, wine, spirit specialists. We have about 300 of those. So not quite one in each shop, but almost. Um, and then you've got to try and use your signage at the, at the, um, on the shelves as well. So we'll try and use as many descriptors we can within the relatively few characters that you have. And obviously fine wine that requires a little bit more explaining um, tends to have slightly bigger, what we call shelf barkers um, that talk about the wine to say something about the provenance so that the customer knows what to expect. Now, what about the uh, the thorny issue of, of offers and discounts and uh, bog offs, you know, the buy one, get one freeze? I mean, how far can we really trust them? It is claimed that these kind of offers are really just cynical ploys on the part of retailers who price their wines artificially high to begin with. And then in order that's in order to discount them um, to their real price. And um, obviously, they're rather duping their customers in the process. What's Waitrose policy on, on offers and discounts? So we've seen a move definitely over the last um, decade where discounts have become much shallower. Um, you can't escape the fact that unlike countries that are larger scale producers of wine, wine isn't something that the British customer would naturally put into their basket. It's a discretionary category. It's a little bit like confectionery, effectively. It's not something you need for your weekly shop. It's a treat. Do you think that's still the case? You, you think that's still the case? It's still a treat? Wine is now the most popular drink um, in the UK, but it is definitely a discretionary category. And the difference it makes to a, to a retailer is that it knows that it off if it offers good value for money on wine, then it can persuade a customer to cross the street and shop at that retailer. But it's not typically something that every shopper puts in their basket. In fact, I would argue that the majority of baskets in supermarket shops don't contain wine. So it's less than less than 50 percent penetration in virtually every retailer. So you do need to persuade the customer in some way to get them to to pick wine up. You don't have to discount everything, um, but it is definitely one of those things that drives what you call footfall traffic in, um, in, in, in retail. So I think we've moved to a position where I think the discounts are much shallower. And that's probably been driven by the big four supermarkets, Tesco, Asda, Sainsbury's and uh, Morrison's seeking to become closer in price to the discounters. So they have uh, adopted more of um, what we call an EDLP, everyday low price um, position on, um, on wine. But discounts is definitely, if you didn't discount, you would not sell as much wine. So customers still expect to be tempted by a discount. But I haven't seen a bog off in the industry for a long, long, long time. Those were cynical. They were never worth the full price, but they disappeared a few years ago. So the buy one, get one free model really isn't going to give you good value. However, the everyday low price or a lower price generally, um, you would say, would offer you value. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because what the, what, these, um, what the retailer is trying to do is tempt you into the shop. And they certainly won't be able to tempt you in unless what they were offering was competitive or even better than the market. So um, it's a good place to start. You know, you would always want your customers to be a little bit more courageous than you're just shopping the aisle end or just the offers. And I think the, um, the more sophisticated wine customers probably do a balance of both or seek out value in a slightly different way. But for those who are less experienced, and let's be fair, it's probably the majority still, um, an offer is a way of starting the journey to understand what it is you're going to buy. So for getting the discounts, which countries or regions or, or brands do you personally look to if you if you want to get the best bang for your buck? I think the, there's no two ways about it. The really famous regions um, trade on their fame and the demand for those relatively limited um, 
appellations or regions means that the prices you pay tend to be a little bit higher. That's not to say they're poor value, but they tend to be a little bit higher. So aiming for those regions that are becoming better known. At the moment, I'm personally really excited by Portugal. Um, I think there's some incredibly exciting wines. South Africa inevitably offers brilliant value. Um, if you look at specific grape varieties, I'm always very excited by uh, New Zealand Pinot Noir. Um, there's a lot of great value in South America. Um, so there are lots of areas to look at, um, as well as, you know, those newer areas in Europe, Italy's islands or Puglia, um, definitely Spain away from Rioja and southern France. Southern France offers brilliant value. And do you think um, for all the bad things we've had from the pandemic and the lockdowns, the fact that you have gone further into virtual events? I mean, I think you had your your drinks festival online this year or last year. Um, do you think that has allowed you more so then to introduce people to the, the visiting virtually a, a, a winery that they would probably never have even bothered to, to, well, they certainly wouldn't have gone necessarily in person, but wouldn't have done virtually either? I, I think so. And, it, and it, took, it really took us by surprise, Susie. It was, um, we sort of decided to do it on a slight wing and a prayer with no choice, really, because we couldn't help hold a, a, an event in person. And it really surprised us, the number of people, the customers who were very pleased to sign up, who were happy to go and buy bottles, who tasted with us online. And we've seen it across all drinks categories, but it's been a real surprise, a revelation. And it makes, makes me wonder what the future looks like. Exciting. But I think the future almost appears to be a blend of the virtual and the actual um, as we work through the fact that COVID-19 is now endemic um, within, within our, our, our society. So I suppose it's opened our eyes. It's a bit of a silver lining, if I'm honest, because the customers who have um, accessed these events have obviously really enjoyed them. And it gives us hope that we can, despite the challenges we're currently going through, continue to inspire customers in that way. Uh, right. Perhaps the most important question of all, the question on everybody's lips right now, with HGV driver and petrol shortages, are we going to see wine shortages at Christmas? So it, the situation is changing all the time. And we had the, you know, the Ever Given, that huge container ship that was stuck in the Suez Canal. I know that we had upwards of 30 containers on different ships that were um, behind in the queue, trying to get this through the Suez Canal at the time. And I think we've been hit by challenge after challenge after challenge since that. And we've been working incredibly, the whole industry has been working incredibly hard at trying to resolve all of that um, as we've approached Christmas. And we've just been hit by driver shortages and fuel at the moment as well. So a lot to deal with, but I'd also say that Having seen this coming, we have accelerated our build-up of stock and we will definitely not run out of wine at Christmas. And I think the benefit of having, in the case of Waitrose, a very, very big, a big range in, in most of our shops is that if there are any exceptional gaps on shelf, if you look slightly to the left or slightly to the right, there will probably be a wine that fulfills the requirement that, that, that you're looking for. So the, the industry will not run out of wine. Will there be some gaps? There might be, but we're definitely trying to, to mitigate that. The pressure is on, but to answer your question, I don't think we will run out of wine. We're pulling out all the stops to avoid that. You heard it here. It's not going to be a booze-free Christmas. Thank goodness. Pierre Paolo, thank you so much. My great pleasure. Thank you, Susie. So no need to panic by just yet. No Christmas shortages. No, apparently not. No, no, no. no, no although, although New Zealand shortages yeah, are possible, as we, as we yeah, heard that in That is episode. in the news a little bit, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. we did hear. What was that? The yeah. New Zealand Savion Blanc episode. Mm, yeah, that, mm. yeah. And it's, it's now popping back up. So yeah, yeah. Well, but, keep an eye on. you know, you might, you might not get your, your New Zealand Sauvignon, don't but need to uh, panic Kiwi buy. Savvy. Panic by New Zealand Sauvignon. Don't need to panic by anything yeah. else. Anyway, mixed messages from us too, <laughs> as well as the government. But yeah, you know, the supermarkets do do a good job, don't they, with... with value and reliability yeah, I suppose those yeah. are two core strengths and, and and you can get some good offers if you pick and choose what kind of offer you go for yes yeah I mean I think you know what what we would always go for is the when there's a 25 percent of the whole range wouldn't we yeah, rather than yeah, the yeah. bog offs you know buy yeah. one get one free is uh, uh, not yeah. good but as Pierre Palace said you know they don't really happen anymore mm. or hardly ever mm. but I think the 25 percent off means whatever wine you love you can buy 
at 25% off. Yeah. That's got to be yeah. good value, hasn't exactly, it, then? Exactly. Really good value. But, um, you know, you, you, you talked to him about own label, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, we, we did didn't, talk we didn't about own label. Um, no, but, I mean, it is, it is often a good option for people to try new things. Um, and he said, and I quote, they at Waitrose put in a disproportionate amount of effort to ensure it's consistent, reliable, safe. Mm. Mm. And he added that they're not just for good versions of the classic styles, you know, like Chianti Rock and Malbec, but also increasingly they're using the own label to to tempt people to buy things from off the beaten track, which mm. is great too. Mm. Mm. It was interesting to hear about discounts too. You know, he he didn't say they're doing less of them, did he? No, <laughs> you know, no. just that they're shallower. It's very diplomatic. Yeah, you know, I think so many wine sales and supermarket are still made on discount, aren't they? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing. Whether people <sighs> then know. just get used to buying on offer, where mm. you know, and that's a flaw in wines model, mm. isn't it? But anyway. I mean, it's not often the producer's fault. It's often the retailer who uses it as a way to get people into store. Into store you yeah. know, was he said? He said. He said, if you didn't discount, you wouldn't sell as much wine. Um, yeah. People still expect to be tempted by a discount. Mm. That's that's one I think that's up for discussion. Yeah, I think that that's that's another episode, isn't mm. it? Mm. Um, but it was interesting. He admitted Bogoffs were cynical. Yeah, yeah. You know? no, that was so, good to hear. Um, Just good to. So to, to, yeah, to say yeah, that, yeah, think, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, as we said, the way we do it, we just wait for a whole range discount, twenty five percent off, where you know the wine you want and you can get it cheaper than you usually would. And mm. and I think maybe then buying sixes or twelves, get them to de- deliver to your home. Yeah, that's a really um, good point. You know, because because we love to see how a wine develops don't we you know so if you've got half a dozen bottles or even a dozen if you love it f- brilliant it's a great way to buy for example champagne isn't it yeah you know even if you buy a, a non-vintage if you buy six or or 12 and just see how they develop open one when you buy them open one another couple of months later and just over time just couple see how they develop a couple, couple of months, months between couple of nights <laughs> a couple of minutes <laughs> but uh I mean, yeah. or you know buy buy mag never mind bagnums buy magnums yeah. you know Godchildren, presents, special yeah. years. I mean, they make the best presents ever, don't they, really? They, they really do. I mean, I, I would say, and I'd argue better than port, you know, fizz ages really well. And, who doesn't, and everybody you know, loves everyone, it. Everyone wants to open a yeah. bottle of fizz for a birthday. Yeah. They don't necessarily an want to old, open a bottle you of port. You know, a, a, a vintage year would be so good, amazing. So a good tip there, another good tip on, on wine buying. You know, and, and um, to go back to Waitrose, they didn't just win the supermarket category at this year's Decanter Retailer Awards, but they were also runners-up in the champagne and sparkling wine category, so... Uh, that's relevant to what we just discussed and, and the England and Wales category too. You know, I think obviously different supermarkets um, are good at different things, some better yeah. at wine than others. But, you know, you can pretty much always find good things wherever you are in the world, in whichever supermarket, from, you know, Aldi to Costco to Tesco to whatever. It's, I, and the best way to shop that wine are, is, I don't know, worth keeping an eye out for reviews or tips mm. uh, from someone you trust. Use an app like Vivino. You know, whatever. These are big ranges to navigate. And they it, are, It can yeah. be helpful just trying to find yeah. a way to make it work for you. And actually, waitresses have also been running a lot of online events over the, uh, you yeah. know, I think over 200 this this past year. And that's also something we wanted to touch on, wasn't it? Because it's a great yeah. way, again, of learning mm. about wines and maybe working out what you might like. Exactly. Finding a way to, to, to try before you buy in a supermarket setting if they are doing events you know as waitrose do so you know this was a really exciting new category uh, uh, this year at the decanter retailer was the virtual wine experience it's a bit of a mm. mouthful but you know to recognize what retailers have done to kind of engage people to, to to keep them entertained and and of course to help sell wine you know so many different kinds of thing of uh, things have been done it's just great to see it's it's definitely worth looking into if you haven't already a good way of as we said trying wine and just having a bit of fun you know and without, do you think these things are still leaving, happening you know they they are still even though we're kind we were obviously of judging a period really a easy, period of yeah. a year um, yeah. last year but you know they are and just look out for them you know i mean naked wines have had their thirst thirsty tuesdays uh, which were from <laughs> Lathwaite's did a virtual did their virtual vintage wine festival um vinoteca had their wine workouts oh, and the online wine tasting club was absolutely bonkers uh but fun yeah. Uh, and they even invented a new packing machine to send out small bags for tasting samples uh, to stave off bankruptcy. And that's the way they got through the, yeah. the, the well, lockdowns. And it's just a great story. Yeah. But uh, in the end, it was the Wine Society who won that particular category. And, and why did they? Very hard for. What did they do? Well, I, I think they realised pretty early on they needed to be proactive. I mean, they have a reputation of being a bit old-fashioned, but less and less so because I think what they're doing I, online yeah. I think and that's with things unfair like virtual events... That exactly. They, you know, they, I don't know. Maybe old-fashioned is the wrong but, word. Yeah. But they've been no, around for a long right. time. Yes, and yeah. they, they just 
do maybe a they're good job established anyway. and you yeah. know it's hard to see them as innovative as and well. But they, really they have are. a very engaged online community, yeah. and so they, they, I think they realised they needed to capitalise on that and do things for people, and and they just ran low. They worked really hard. They ran you know over 160 virtual events over things like Zoom and Instagram and YouTube. Um, I think nine thousand nine and a half thousand members clocked on thirty eight thousand registrations, one hundred twenty five thousand views on YouTube. You know, these are pretty good numbers yeah. for wine, aren't they? They, are. they, are. they? They just made a big effort, and 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 clearly they're pretty well connected, of course, too, aren't they? Yeah, you know, yeah. uh, with the people they work with on their own label brands and stuff like that. You know, they, and and the people yeah. they sell. You know, they they had great people on like Jean Guillaume Pratt and Sam O'Keefe and Hugh Johnson and Veronique Sant. I mean, it's just yeah. you know, it was it was they did a really good job. The I wines think. wines literati, but they but they didn't they also win the overall award? They did, yeah. They, they, I mean, they won quite a few other awards, uh, including best large online retailer so you know in the end it was hard to argue against them winning the outstanding retailer of the year because you know that's what they are <laughs> you know they've got great prices they're often much cheaper than elsewhere good value good service you know great range um and i think this was something we want to mention by way of overall general advice wasn't it you know don't be afraid to join a wine club yeah you know, absolutely don't be put off because it can be worth its while in the Absolutely. I mean, you can buy it, frankly, as a, as a present for the the wine lover in your life. Um, mm. But you know, do you I have think a wine it, lover in your life? No, definitely not. <laughs> no, I'd stay clearer than five. Dearie me, <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't dream of Nothing having one trouble. of those. It might even make you do a Be podcast. Mad. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I'm being serious. I think I think the wine club does suit some people. Um, yeah. Well, quite a lot of people yeah. know that it yeah, does. Yeah. You know, you Especially get to be part people. of a, a bigger, bigger community. You get access to great wines. Um, I suppose this also ties in with subscription plans, which I think mm. the wine society do a fair bit of. Yeah, I think um, they've got one called Wine Without Fuss, which I think is a great name. It's a good it, name. It's yeah. what, <laughs> what you want, isn't it? Isn't it? No yeah. fussing, just the wine. Um, but they but they didn't win that category. Did no, they, they didn't. No, a subscription wine club uh, award, which was different. Went to an intriguing company called uh, the Little Fine Wine Company. Oh. Uh, now we do know the owner, we do uh, Vicky know the owner, Stevens yeah. Clark. Oh, I'm it's, so pleased that you won that. Exactly, That's brilliant. it's a, just a brilliant business. You know, uh, they specialise in half bottles, but and not very many of them. But they've got just an outstanding range. Um, and funny enough, you know, apparently the half bottles worked really well when it came to sending out bottles for lockdown tastings too. <laughs> that just makes total sense, exactly. doesn't it? Yeah. Although apparently, yeah. at one stage, uh, I think Vicky found herself packing all of these hundreds of cases up in, in her flat because her warehouse just had to shut down. Oh, God, now but, that you know, is, you that's commitment. You, do what that's you need to do. Then. true commitment, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, um, I think it is, yeah. But I think, generally speaking, the subscription plan model is is one that does seem to be quite popular right yeah, now. Yeah, I think it's, it's one that's well worth considering in terms of how to buy wine. You know, if you want the hassle of taking out things and you just, and you, and you, and this is important, you trust and rate the retailer that is important you know it's a great way to have a case of wine delivered regularly try new things but not not to have to worry about it you know but I, yeah we definitely would say check the terms and conditions a, a good subscription plan should be totally flexible you should be in control and they should have good customer service so that's almost worth checking out before you sign up yeah yeah you know, and definitely don't sign up to anything you're not 100 percent sure about no no okay so anything else to flag up yeah yeah just one final thing really and that's um majestic um you know this was, I think it's fair to say, one of the best wine warehouse chains in the UK, but it just went to pot um, for a few years when it was owned by Naked Wines. And there's Not no other way of saying it. Yeah, that's true. You know, but it's under new owners now, and and, and it's just looking back on form. It's, um, which it's is looking really good, isn't really it? Really exciting. I mean, so it, much innovation, and that's there. why it won the National National Wine Retailer Award uh, among Fantastic. quite a few others, actually. So they've they've revamped sixty five percent of their range. You know, the biggest overhaul in their history. They knew that they 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 knew they needed to turn things around. Brilliant. And they have, they've done you know. it. They've done and, it. And and it's not just that. It's they've got some you know brilliant initiatives on the go you know um, including their diversity in wine scholarships you know which have already attracted apparently around 50 students uh, who who were sponsored to do their wine and spirit education trust level two um, qualifications and have been sort of encouraged gently to start careers in wine if they want to which is it's brilliant and you met some of them the other night didn't I did you? yeah that was really really fun uh, I did come home a bit later than planned <laughs> <laughs> does happen. So this um, was at the majestic tasting. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, you know, it was one of the most, I think, I don't know, fun, exciting tastings I've been to in a long time because you know you had this bunch of people coming in to taste who were clearly super talented from a whole range of backgrounds and professions, um, just you know brought together by by well a, a passion for wine, I guess. And, and, and majestic. Well, this, these the this is the the people who've done the they the, won the, they the scholarship scholarships. Winners who've yes. Done the qualifications. So as well as all the other people that would normally be at this tasting, yeah, there this were the, was, there was 
an influx bunch of, 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 of bunch of uh, you know of, of new faces, and it was just wonderful to see. And, to and they're not them. necessarily in the wine trade. No, no. some of them have, have started in it, but actually, lots of them aren't at all. Yeah. But they're, they're, they're keen to, and that was one of the criteria for joining. Are yeah. you keen to? You know, and they don't something have to work at Majestic afterwards. I mean, it's, it's a really amazing yeah. initiative. But but you know, wine desperately needs more diverse voices and outlooks. You know, so it it, it, it seems like this initiative is really starting to make change happen. There are other things happening, but this is one that's quite tangible and it's just great to see. You know, we need more of it. Yeah. But I think it's worth saying kudos to Majestic for doing it. And 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 I think they're going to advertise for more applicants soon for their third wave. So if that appeals to anyone listening, you know, do look, look out, out for Look out for that, absolutely. Mm. And they've also got a fun sustainability initiative going on with them, with yeah. cork, haven't they? Their cork right. scheme. So they they this is where they encourage people to bring in corks to their stores where they've got their cork banks. Mm. And and then they ship them off to the Eden Project, um, this massive biodome in Cornwall, if, you, if you're not familiar with it, mm. where, where they're used as mulch for the plants. I mean, it's such a brilliant idea. Mulch. Isn't brilliant. it? I love mulch. Um, I know I you love, love mulch. I love corks, though. You know, love corks, do you think we should take mulch. all the corks that we have in the house? I think we'd overwhelm them. Well, to Majestic. I yeah. thought you were going to say try and make them into mulch. Um, I think Majestic will do it a lot better than, or, or the Eden Project will do it a lot better than we can. That's true. Yeah, no, we should. We should. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, we need to hire a dump truck. We need to hire a dump truck. About five of their court banks, <laughs> frankly. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so it's a scheme in association with the Portuguese Cork Association. And I think the aim is to recycle over one million corks per year. So it's. That's really, good. It's, it's at scale, That's good, you know, and it? it's yeah. just a brilliant idea, isn't it? I think more shops need to do things like this. It's imaginative. It's just something a bit different. And I think sustainability is such a massive challenge for wine in general. Wine needs to engage with it on lots yeah. of different levels, retailers included. So you know, our but green that sounds like a, such a simple option. Sorry I know, to I know it's just one. It's just little things. Lots of little things can make change happen, yeah. can't they? So it's great to see that happen. Um, you know, and the Venorium in Kent, uh, who specialise in Australian wine, but have a good list. You know, they won our Green Champion Award, and they've really addressed you know this sustainability issue sustainability, sustainability. Issue in a serious way you know going carbon neutral mineralizing travel even the owner does some beekeeping oh. um but you know it's it's lots of people are doing good work it's great to see yeah. it would be lovely to see more of it yeah. as well yeah right so it's probably time to wrap things up which yeah. means we need a wine recommendation and i think we've got two haven't we a bit of a bonus edition indeed, here indeed so 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 one is from uh, the runner up in our national wine retailer award that's tanners um and it's a white wine with a difference isn't it it's it is the uh, croatica grajvina 2020 from slavonia uh, in croatia it's, it's 9.95 so it's under a tenner and it's just really lovely it's full of apple fruit and just really easy drinking isn't it and a bit different a bit different you know, put that on your table yeah. yeah and the other is from majestic so we're back at majestic and it's the root catalan rouge 2019 which is lovely it's a it's a peppery plummy juicy savory red you know sort of think winter stew kind of territory mm. um and it's Brilliant value. It's seven ninety nine when you mix six, so you can't really go wrong with that, there we can go, you? There we go. Don't forget, you can find all the info about the Decanter Retailer Awards in the latest, I think it's the November edition, edition of the magazine, uh, and also on their website, decanter.com, and their social media feeds, which are at Decanter and at Decanter Awards uh, on Instagram. Now, if you haven't already, do join in our fun and potentially very worthwhile English wine giveaway, mm. which we featured in our last episode, English Wine Now What?, all you need to do is give us a rating and review wherever you get your podcasts. Then let us know that you've left that review and you will go into the hat or the wine bucket to win six medal winning wines from the Wine GB Awards. The deadline is Sunday, the 17th of mm. November. So that's our last piece of advice, isn't it? You know, it is indeed. If you just won all our giveaways on this podcast you might never need to buy wine again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to Decanter, also to Paola Tisch and to Pierpaolo Petrassi. And of course, thanks to you for listening. Cheers. Cheers.